All right, welcome back to MP2. And what we're going to do in the next series of videos is finish up this feature that we've been working on. So at this point, you should have the other parts of the test suite passing because we're going to build on top of that. So we've added code to the server to receive a favorite place and sort of update our database of favorite places, as it were, it's an in memory, but that's okay. Um, we have support in the client for making those requests that we're going to use, about to use. And then we've also uh, figured out how to launch our ad place activity from our main activity. And so, you know, we're, we're in a really good position to get started with this new activity that we're creating, which is the last piece, because we've actually done a lot of work, but the user can't use it yet, right? They're, they're still, you know, when they run the app, and I'll show you what happens, right? Uh, so go ahead and run the emulator. When they run the emulator and they long press, they're still just uh, left at a blank screen. Uh, right, so I long press and I am a bit of blank screen. So this is where we're gonna fix this. Um, so uh, let's go ahead over here and we're gonna open up our app. We're gonna go into our main directory where we're gonna look at uh, a couple of things. So one of the things that we're gonna be doing now is, and this is something that we're sort of uh, helping you learn as you work on the project, is how to build on top and, and mimic existing code. So, you know, there's lots of great resources for learning how to write code online, but frequently when you're working inside an existing project, the project itself is a great resource. And, and when possible, you want to try to understand and learn from the code that you're provided, partly because that will set up good idioms that you can follow that will allow your code to fit in with the larger context and the larger project that you're typically working on. It's very rare to start anything from scratch these days. A lot of times you're gonna work with people that have already been building something and you're gonna to need to fit into their way of doing things. It's a good way to do that. Um, okay, so let's open up our ad place activity. Right now this is doing nothing. Um, and I actually put in, had to put in this impression here to allow it to do nothing. Um, but now we're gonna start uh, fleshing this out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an onCreate method. Um, and for now, I can just go ahead and this is not null, I don't think. Uh, actually, maybe it is null. Huh? Okay. Uh, so for now, I'm just going to leave the call to super here. Um, but I need to start filling in this method so that this activity does useful stuff. Um, and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to load up the um, we're going to load the layout for this activity. And you'll see that's done right here in our main activity. It says load the layout for this activity and set the type. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut and paste this line of code into my onCreate method. And now, here's the deal. The activity, the main activity has its own layout. It's over here in the layout directory, uh, in the resources uh, subdirectory. So this is where like a bunch of resources that are associated with this project get put. So the layout, the main activity has its own layout. The add place activity is going to use a different layout because it needs different UI components for the user to interact with. So rather than using the main activity, if, if we left this in here, what would happen is that our add place activity would start up, but it would have a search bar, it would, ha it would have a map, it would have space for a map component that we're not gonna load. So what we wanna do here is we want to uh, load a different layout. Now I could have had you complete that layout as part of this, but I thought it was more appropriate at this point to give you a layout to work with. And so over here, there is this activity underscore add place layout. Um, and, you know, we can open this up in the layout editor and you can kind of get a sense of what it's about to look like, right? It has a save and a cancel button and then it has uh, a box that allows you to put in a description for their favorite place. And what we're going to be doing in the last part of the MP2 or this checkpoint is finishing this and getting this, uh, getting this activity to work. Um, but let's go ahead and just get it to load first so that we can see it. Uh, so I'm going to go back here and instead of r.layout.activity main, I'm going to do r.layout.activity add place. So let's go ahead and, and rerun the app and, and see what happens. Um, I, want to, I want to restart this. Okay, let me pull this in so it's a little bigger. Cool. All right, so the places are loaded and now I go ahead, I long press and now I see, cool, I, I, have, this, I have this new activity that's started. Now, the buttons don't do anything yet, and that's what we're going to need to work on for the rest of this uh, this checkpoint, right? Uh, or the rest of MP2 is working on figuring out how to add the functionality so that this um, activity works, right? We'll talk about how to link things back and forth and stuff like that. Um, 
There's one other thing we're gonna do though before we go on, and that's we're gonna go over here to the application. We're gonna use this later. I'm gonna open up Favorite Places application, and you'll see down here, it says to insert your ID from id.txt. So take the contents of id.txt, that UUID that we gave you that identifies your project, and stick it right here. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab a random UUID from the internet because I don't wanna show you mine, but there it is. So we're gonna put that in there because we're gonna use that later when we build a request to the server. Now, let me just talk a little bit about what might be weird about this. So the requests that we're gonna to make, to, that we're going to make to the server from our app are gonna include this to identify the client. Now you might be wondering, well, if I have this in my app, then every client has the same ID and that doesn't make a lot of sense. And that's right. If we were building this for real, we would have to include some type of authentication mechanism to allow the user to log in, for example, and then we would have some information that we would send to the server, some login credentials that the server could validate that would then produce an ID for the request, frequently in the form of like a uh, email address, right? That's frequently a key that's used in a lot of databases to associate uh, you know, uh, with a particular piece of information. Like that's actually how we built the database of favorite places that we gave you, is we built a web app for our staff to use and they logged in um, and, and that worked that way, right? In this case, Authentication is actually quite uh, involved to get working in an Android app, not that you couldn't do it on your own and get it to work uh, for your own projects. Um, and that might be something to look into because it is something that you frequently need. But instead of going through that, we're just gonna work around this by having your app communicate with the server and identify itself using this ID. But this is, you know, just to say this is not the way that you would normally do it. Okay, so we're in good shape. We have, uh, what, what have we done so far? We're having the activity load the layout. So this layout that we've designed uh, is being shown to the user and has the controls that we need. It has a place to enter the description. It has a save button, which is what's gonna add the favorite place. And it has the cancel button, which we'll work on next. And that's actually gonna take us back to the, the main activity, right? So the next thing we'll do is we'll uh, talk about how to link the layout to our code in the add place activity, and then we'll get the cancel button to work.